Namaste, good afternoon. <laughs> I was thinking a lot about uh, dreams and reoccurring dreams. I've always been interested. Since, since I was a young boy, I consistently I would have a dream about being invisible. If there's any quality or any ability that I've ever wanted consistently since I can remember is to be invisible. Okay? This was just like nirvana, like heaven to me. Imagine the freedom of being invisible. Nobody could see me. I could live with privacy, I could live with secrets. <laughs> How wonderful. And then I want to tell a story because maybe dreams are a precursor, kind of prediction of what might happen in the future. Will I be able to ever become invisible? Would I ever have the abilities? Could I train? Could I learn? The art of invisibility? Hmm. Well, when I was somewhere, I don't know, somewhere sometime, <laughs> uh, when I began my uh, formal studies at this beautiful little center in the Klihi Valley on Oahu in Hawaii, In the urban area, but it had a rural setting. Setting they had quite a piece of land, and they had landscaped it. And I remember there was a cart, cart path, paved cart path going through trees. And the senior Roshi at that time would drive around his little golf cart and circle the grounds. And I'd see him once in a while and bow to him. Then, um, but he seldom spoke, and I understand that he had a lot of meetings with uh, influential uh, s political leaders. Uh, so he had some uh, standing in the community, but he was an enigma to me, just kind of a, there's the, I uh, would know the senior monk, and everybody would honor him. So I started my formal training, my sitting training, in the, in the dojo, the zendo, in the dojo. And we not only learned to meditate and practice, practice rigorously, you know, straight back, crossed leg, half lotus or full lotus if possible, preferably, no moving, back straight. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> I've never had a good posture, so sitting straight has always been a challenge to me. And unmoving, I've learned to get better. I'm, I can sit unmoving for pretty much two hours, but still the straight back <laughs> is a challenge. I can still hear my mother's voice. Sit up straight, stand up straight, put your shoulders back. And I still practice this, but my natural position and then it's kind of counterintuitive to relaxing because when I relax I just kind of slump and I know that my posture is pretty much like that instead of like this okay so we also practice the cha dao the tea ceremony we also practiced uh, ikibana flower arranging and most importantly, we were given a martial arts. And I remember kendo, with the, you know, the sword. They had the bamboo stick and kendo and could hit each other. And that was kind of fascinating. Nothing better than hitting each other with a stick. To hit and to be hit were somehow equally attractive, <laughs> as weird as it sounds. And then there was Kyushu. That was archery, and they, they looked so regal and elegant with the giant bow, the giant bow and the special robe that they wore, the Kyushu, 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 oh, our uh, Japanese archery. 
And I remember the first day of report, we were a gi. We would meditate in the martial arts gi. And it was interesting. We all had white belts. Even the Roshi, the teacher, had a white belt. Because they didn't believe in uh, marking your accomplishments, separating. They didn't believe in separation. Just as they did in cloister, they didn't gather in groups. Uh, the Roshi didn't, wasn't cloistered, wasn't living at the, on the grounds, the senior, uh, the senior Roshi seemed to, but the one that taught me came and go and had a job like everybody else. And the whole point being later is to be a monk without a robe, and I thought that was quite, without the garb, if you were walking around with an orange uniform on, the orange robe, I wear the beads, but this is a different aspect of my practice. But, uh, and usually, beads pretty much are just for this presentation, actually. And I haven't, seldom have an occasion to wear them uh, beyond the confines of this room. <laughs> With the three Buddhas, the green, red, and gold Buddha smiling down upon me. So anyway, what does this have to do with being invisible? Well, the Roshi, when I went to the dojo and uh, in my gi and started to practice waiting because the Roshi was supposed to get to know you and decide which martial arts you needed. So he told me there was a line down the, on one side of the dojo on the mat, just a straight line. And he said, okay, walk and slowly put one foot consciously with full attention, put one foot in front of the other, touching one foot in front of the other, one foot in the other, and walk to the end, make a graceful turn, and come back the same way, one foot in front of the other. And this went on for weeks. We would, I would go twice a week, so this went on for maybe months. Without any explanation, the Roshi would be teaching the kendo, supervising the kendo, uh, that went on at the same area that I was, but he would just look at me and point, look at me and point. And then once in a while he'd come and put some attention on me. Boy, I would tell you that this is not an easy task when you're under the scrutiny, that you're trying to do it perfectly, this, this one. And after a year, probably a year of this, I'd already resigned myself. Well, I guess this, I don't get any. I'm the only one doing this, by the way. And I thought, well, it must be a glaring uh, short, shortcoming on my part because uh, why am I only one has to do this? Okay. But then one day he explained to me uh, the, what my martial art was, finally. He called it Zen Walk, and he told me that this was the basis of all martial arts, this walking and this balancing and this focus and this attention and this re repetition was the foundation of every martial arts and he wanted me to be soaked steeped he wanted me to be drilled in the fundamentals to be established in the basics so the zen walk and he, he explained, I'm going to read it now, but this is basically what he told me. When you walk through a crowd, you do not struggle with every person you meet. You just find your way between. Similarly, don't focus on even one thought, one concern, one desire, even for the desire for peace or enlightenment. Don't listen to the content of the thoughts telling you something is wrong, something is unfulfilled, some state of peace has been, hasn't been yet obtained. Instead, if you notice in the space between any two thoughts, what you find is complete silence already, perfect fulfillment and isness, and boundless, imperturbable peace. You must be ready to refuse and reject every thought which the mind tries to seduce you. Okay. Uh, and this was coupled with our practice. We were encouraged. Gen Zen students try to jettison, try to toss out, throw out of the airplane concepts and just sit. They eventually see the joke and laugh. 
Okay, so the, the Roshi told me a story of his teacher because he did practice this Zen walk for many years just as I did and somehow he saw in me some of the same characteristics in him that he thought that this fu fundamental foundation would most benefit. And he told me that his teacher told him, his Roshi told him that he could walk through a crowd. When you walk through a crowd, you do not struggle with every person you meet. And he would swear that the Roshi would become invisible. He would go through the crowd and he'd merge. He'd become one with the crowd. He'd be in the rhythm of the crowd, the, the, the movement, the, 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 the motion, the isness of the crowd to the point that he could walk through a crowd and never slow down, never hesitate, keep the steady walking, one foot in the other, keep the steady pace, and penetrate right through the crowd without anyone interrupting, without ever getting in the way, without ever having to stop, without anyone having to stop. It was if it was as if he wasn't there. And only then did it sink in. The invisibility that I was always desiring is possible, can be done. So every time I have an opportunity, I practice this. I try to blend in, to try to become one with the crowd, to listen for the rhythm. Everything has a rhythm. Uh, it's, it, it, determine it to find my rhythm, my song, in my motions, in my timing, in my every step, in my breath, with gazing straight ahead, level, never looking, never paying attention, never hesitating, never speeding up, never stopping,